Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers. Oh, hit my mic with Green Acres Pest Control. Hope everybody's all right tonight. And uh, I don't know if you could tell by the title of the video. I don't know if very many of you can see the title of the video. I know I have a hard time seeing it whenever I go live. But um, I want to go over temperate and crossfire, the differences between the two pesticides tonight. I had a question come in on one of my videos over the week. And uh, the guy actually asked me if I could go over the two, so I thought I would do it live on stream. And so uh, here I am. <laughs> so I'm going to get right into it right away, and I want to talk about... Uh, so Crossfire and Temperate. These are the two pesticides I want to go over tonight. I've got both labels here. I'm going to go over both of the labels, and I want to describe to you why I pick Crossfire, which is the label on the left, to Temperate, which is the label on the right. And so um, if you live in Canada or uh, New York, you may be able to get a hold of Temperate. Temperate's easier to come by than Crossfire. Crossfire is a neonicotinoid uh, family of pesticides, but I believe Temperate is as well. Uh, yes, it is. It's a metacloprid, so it is a neonic. And so um, that's one thing you can tell by the active ingredients. They are completely different active ingredients. They are they work different. So one of the reasons Temperate, which is the uh, label on the right, one of the reasons a lot of people pick Temperate over Crossfire is because Temperate is a it's kind of like a one size fits all solution for bugs. So if you scroll down the um, the label for Temperate, it says uh, it's it's. <clears throat> Protection of pollinators. Now, this is one of the reasons that your neonicotinoid family of pesticides are outlawed in uh, sta certain states and even certain countries is because they are a bee hazard. It's a, um, it, it's a neonicotinoid uh, that's the family of pesticides it belongs to, and it's been proven to be a bee hazard, and so they don't want you to hurt pollinators, uh, not just bees, but also things like butterflies and other bugs and stuff too. They don't want you to harm pollinators. And so that's one of the problems of temperate because it is a, as, as you'll see, it is a, a it's a kind of like a, you can use it for other things. So if you go to indoor pests, it's for ants, bed bugs, a blue or green bottle flies, box elder bugs, brown uh, stink bugs, uh, carpet beetles, centipedes, clo uh, clothes moths, car clover mites, cluster flies, cockroaches, etc. So there's lots of things you can use temperate for. It's not just for bed bugs, but if you go over here to um, the Crossfire pesticide, you'll see that it is only for bed bugs. Crossfire insecticide bed bug concentrate, Crossfire bed bug concentrate, it is only for bed bugs. It is not labeled for anything except bed bugs, so you have to use it on bed bugs only. So if you were gonna write a pros and cons list of the two pesticides uh, side by side, the fact that Temperate can be used for more bugs than Crossfire. Temperate would be one that you would pick. Because like I said, it could be you could take care of lots of things. You don't just have to use it for bed bugs alone like Crossfire. So that's one of the things that Temperate has going for it. And so as you scroll down here, what but that like I was saying, a lot of people would assume that because of the diversity in, in temperate and the fact that it can be used for more bugs well isn't it a more uh isn't it a better pesticide isn't it one that i would rather pick over something like crossfire why would i pick crossfire when i can buy this and i mean sometimes i have ants in the house i don't always have bed bugs sometimes i have ants sometimes i have crickets shouldn't i just buy temperate because that works for everything and so i'm going to go over why uh why temperate is not so and two, go ahead and post your questions in the live chat because I plan on answering those as soon as I get over this little introductory little lesson here. Um, as soon as I get over this, I am going to get to your questions. I will answer your questions as soon as I can. I'll, I'll, I'll pull the screen down and I'll answer your questions. But I want to go over this first while I'm thinking about it because this is actually a question that was asked last week. So it says here that uh, in order to use it, so the way you use it, Temperate is when pests are seen or not, but reapply every seven to ten days if needed. So, Temperate is a pesticide that allows for the use every seven to ten days. That's when you're supposed to use it. That's how often you're supposed to use it. That's what the label instructs you to use it every basically uh, week to week and a half. You're supposed to reapply Temperate to get control of your problem. 
if you scroll down to Crossfire, actually, uh, and I, found, I had it up here earlier, Crossfire is actually effective for 30 days. So it has a 30-day residual. Um, let's see. It's, it's, it's very hard to find it. It's, not, it's a very difficult label, which is also one of the things that, that Crossfire has against it, is that the label, because it's only four bed bugs, everything is kind of scattered throughout the label. You kind of have to know what to look for and find it. And so um, it says here, solutions must be used within 24 hours of being prepared which Temper does not have that type of uh, problem with it where you have to use it right away. It's more of a, um, you can mix it and use it if you have a little bit in a week, you could reuse it or whatever. It's not, you know, a problem where Crossfire actually will deteriorate in your tank. So they expect you to use it within 24 hours. Um, but like I said, Crossfire is a 30 day residual. So you only have to apply it once every 30 days where Temperate, you have to apply it every 7 to 10 days. So you're going to do way more applications with Temperate to get rid of your bed bug problem. And that's one of the things people from Canada actually um, contact me quite frequently because Crossfire is not available in Canada. So this would be an option for you if you're in Can uh, Canada or New York and you can't get a hold of Crossfire. You can always use Temperate, but you're going to need to retreat every week to week and a half. So it says here on the tempered label, do not apply broadcast treatments to floors, floor coverings. Do not apply to ho uh, hospital, nursing home rooms while they are occupied. Do not apply in classrooms while they are occupied. Do not spray as a space spray, which is an air treatment in the air where you would breathe it in. Don't do that. It says do not allow excessive dripping runoff to occur. Uh, do not apply where electrical short circuits would occur. So don't spray it in your wall outlets. Do not apply to furniture or upholstery where prolonged contact with humans will occur. Do not spray bed liners or materials which come into contact with occupants of the bed. Do not apply more than five gallons of diluted product indoors per individual applicator for day. So, so what they're saying here is, and I, I want to point this out, do not spray to furniture or upholstery where a prolonged contact with humans will occur. So this is one of the parts of the tempered label. This is the biggest con to tempered and why you would probably not want to use tempered for bed bugs. Because if you read if you read this label here, do not use commercial. So so let's go over the um, the crossfire really quick. Do not allow adults, children, pets to enter sprays of dry. Do not apply to plants crops. Do not treat areas when occupants are present, which is similar to tempered. Uh, do not apply as a space spray, same as tempered. Do not wet articles to the point of runoff or drip, same as tempered, and do not use treated articles until spray has dry. So, but nowhere on this label does it say, do not apply to furniture or upholstery where a prolonged contract with humans will occur. So that is one of the problems with tempered, is that you can't, so basically what they're saying is do not spray a mattress. So if you scroll down here and you read the actual bed bug, now this is the directions on how to use tempered for uh, bed bug control. So they actually have a specific part of the label. So they have ants here, they have flying insects, they have, you know, bed bugs. So here's the bed bug application. It tells you what to mix it to, to apply. This is how you're supposed to mix it. Uh, and then it says, efficacy of this product is not affected by heat treatment. So applications can be made before heat treatments, which is, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, so you, you can use it before a heat treatment, which a lot of other pesticides you cannot because heat will break down the pesticide. So we're going to say here, so bed bug eggs that are directly treated with this product are killed outright and young nymphs are emerged from the eggs. That's good. So you don't get that a lot with, with Crossfire as far as um, able to kill eggs directly on contact. A lot of times with Crossfire, it does not work that way that the eggs actually have to, have, uh, have to um, actually hatch before they die. Okay, so for infested, for infested mattresses, remove linens, wash before reuse, apply to tufts, seams, folds, and edges until moist, allowed to dry before remaking the bed. So it specifically says here, you're not, so, so basically what the directions are saying is you're allowed to treat the, the seams of a mattress around the edges, but if you have any problem with bed bugs actually living in the folds on the top or the bottom of the mattress, you're not allowed to treat those areas. It specifically states to only treat the edges and the seams, and that's what you're supposed to use. You're supposed to, or supposed to treat. It says apply to the box springs, bed springs, 
and the interior of the bed frames, headboards, including cracks and joints, which is the exact same thing it says on the Crossfire label. Uh, it says, when bed bugs are found in upholstered furniture, apply only to infested tufts, seams, folds, and edges. Do not apply to flat surfaces where prolonged human contact will occur. If, beds, if bugs heavily infest furniture, inside cushions and or batting, apply a labeled insecticide, dust, or consider fumigation. So they're pretty much telling you you're not allowed to treat your furniture with temperate. You can treat your bed with temperate. I mean, not your bed, but your, you can treat your bed with crossfire, but you cannot treat your bed with temperate. You can only treat the seams and the edges. If it's a spot where you're going to actually lay down on the bed, you're not allowed to, to use it in those areas. Uh, couches, love seats, lazy boy recliners, places like that, you're not allowed to use it on those treated surfaces. But Crossfire, you can. So you can actually treat all of the uh, surfaces that may be in contact with humans you can actually treat those areas with Crossfire because Crossfire is safer. It's a safer pesticide, Crossfire, than Temperate. The label allows you to use it in more places than Temperate does. So that's why I use Crossfire and I don't use Temperate. So the pros to Crossfire is you can, only, you, you can use it once every 30 days, so it saves the customer money. They don't have to spend as much on the application because every time you come out to a house, you're going to have to charge because it's expensive to do a bed bug treatment. So you don't have to do but once a month treatment. Um, with temperate, you're having to treat uh, two to four times a month with temperate. So you're treating more regularly, more often. You're having to use more pesticide. And not only that, you cannot treat the areas that the bed bugs live with temperate where you can with Crossfire. In fact, the Crossfire label specifically states to treat everywhere you find bed bugs, including the bed. So you can go everywhere. You can even treat automobiles with Crossfire. So I hope that that answers the question I was given. I really did want to go over both of these labels with you guys so you could actually see the differences between the two pesticides and understand why I picked Crossfire over Temperate. And so hopefully that will answer your questions. And so now I will get to the questions in the chat. So uh, let me go back and read because there's been a lot said. <laughs> um, so Cheryl Salazar says, My apartment has a pest control for the roaches that live here, and they are going to bomb my place. They gave me detailed instructions to follow before they come on Saturday. How does bombing work, and is it harmful to me? Okay, so if they're actually telling you they're going to bomb your apartment, um, I'd like to know exactly what type of treatment they're going to be doing. I could give you a better answer as to what type of pesticides they're using on how it's going to affect you and how it's going to affect your children or your pets. That's something I would really need to know um, because a bomb implies that they're going to fumigate, and fumigation is harmful to you if you are there during application, but of course they're not going to allow you to be there because you have to wear things like uh, respirators and stuff like that when you're doing, that's a space treatment. So like we were going over these labels earlier, when I was talking to you about a space treatment, the things you're not supposed to do with crossfire and temperate, a space treatment is when you fog the air around the area. And so what happens is the insecticide, uh, it fogs the air and then it settles on the surfaces and it kills the bugs when they crawl across it. And that uh, residual will only be effective for so long. So um, typically when they allow you to come back into your apartment, that's when it is safe to re-enter and usually it's harmless to you. You're not going to have any problem with uh, the pesticide reacting to you. But it really just depends on what type of chemical they're going to be using. I can give you a better answer if I know the pesticides they're going to be using in your apartment. Um, John Snow says, winter is coming, but he also said, <laughs> I overdid it a bit with crossfire in my bedroom. I haven't been feeling so great the last few weeks. Is it possible for the constant fumes to be making me feel ill? It's been three weeks and still smells. Okay, so it sounds to me like you may have mixed it improperly. Um, you shouldn't smell it at all. It's an odorless chemical. So it makes me feel like maybe you didn't mix it with the water like you're supposed to. Um, I have never heard of anyone getting sick from Crossfire. It's actually labeled EPA safe pesticide. It's not supposed to harm mammals in any way. So it may be something else that you've done uh, that may have hurt you, but I'm not exactly sure what you've done. 
with the pesticide. But this is why I tell people to be sure to read their label before they even buy a pesticide because you want to make sure, and that's why I'm going over the labels today, is because I want you to be sure of what you're purchasing before you go and buy it and apply it. It's really important that you know what pesticides are going to do uh, you know, when you use them around your home and if you're even going to have the ability to treat the, the problem that you've got. Because not everybody, I mean, I'm given as many instructions on how to do this that, that I can do, but not everybody really qualifies to be able to do a, a bed bug treatment with Crossfire. It's something that sometimes you just need to hire somebody to do it. Um, so I'm sorry if you made yourself sick, but I don't, I don't think it was the crossfire that did it. It may have been something else you did alongside the crossfire. Uh, John Snow also says, I also worry because my cat likes to lie near the baseboards and they were still a little damp. See, now that's one of the things that I always tell people to do is you want to always remove all children and pets, which it does say on the label that no one needs to be in the room or in the building or in the property at all. Uh, while you're doing the application and in fact no one is even allowed to re-enter the property until the application is dry because you don't want pets and children to come into contact with a pesticide while it's still wet because that's when it's going to transfer. So I did a bed bug job today and the people had to leave the house and I usually give them a, a window of between two and three hours and I tell them you know after that period come in check see if the surfaces are dry if they are dry then you can re-enter. If not, you know, leave and be gone for maybe another half hour, 45 minutes or whatever. Come back in, check and see. Um, it's been kind of difficult over the last maybe six to nine months because, you know, of things going on in the country. And so a lot of people haven't been able to actually leave their property where they'll might go out on a porch or a back porch or a front porch and they may sit there for a little while while the chemical dries and then they'll re-enter and check every so often just to see. The label of Crossfire is not specific on how long you need to be out of the property. It only says to be out until it is dry, but I just tell people two to three hours because that's what I've told people for years when it came to flea treatments. But when you treat for fleas, you usually get the surfaces a little wetter. You're treating the entire floor almost to a puddling effect. It's, it's wet, but it's not wet enough to puddle, and it does take a long time for that to dry. So usually I tell people two to three hours. That's always worked with flea treatments. And so that's what I tell people on bed bug treatments as well. I've never had somebody re-enter the property, call me and say, hey, everything's still wet. They usually, you know, it's perfectly fine to go in after that. So you always want to make sure when you apply with Crossfire uh, or any pesticide for that matter, you want to make sure that your pets and your children and you, family, you know, anybody else, you know, maybe visitors you've got in your house, make sure everybody is out of the house while you're applying the chemical. Make sure nobody re-enters the house until the chemical is dry. That's the most important thing. You need to make sure the chemical is dry before anyone re-enters the house. And it has nothing to do with the fumes. There is actually no toxic vapor with Crossfire. It doesn't create a toxic smell. You, you, to breathe it in, if it smells funny, you know, it's, it's you know, just as toxic as a fart. You know, I mean, <laughs> people fart, you know. <laughs> so People can smell that. You're not going to die from one. So, uh, But you can smell it. Just because you can smell it doesn't mean it's going to kill you or harm you at all. So, uh, June, July says, how long after, uh, after spraying crossfire should I wait to spray alpine for fleas? Is it safe to spray bedding with alpine? How safe is alpine for dogs? Okay, but that's a lot of questions. Um, so how long after spraying crossfire should I wait to spray for alpine for fleas? So flea treatments can be done right away. You're not going to spray the entire floor with crossfire. You're only going to spray the cracks and crevices around the baseboard. Um, an alpine treatment is a uh, broadcast application to the floor. So you're going to treat the floor with alpine. You're not going to treat the floor with crossfire. So you could do both applications theoretically right side by side with each other as long as you've got two separate tanks. Now you don't want to mix crossfire and alpine in the same tank. You want to have a separate tank for one uh, and the other. So that you, so basically you're going to have one tank for bed, fleas and one tank for bed bugs. Um, so that's the only thing that I would do if I were treating for crossfire uh, fleas and bed bugs at the same time is I would use two different tanks to apply the chemicals because of the, um, the differences in pesticide. You don't want to mix them together. Um, and Alpine is safe to use around dogs, but like I said just, just a minute ago, you want to make sure your cats and dogs are out of the house when you're applying and don't allow them to re-enter the house until the floors and all are dry. Uh, you cannot use any pesticide that I know of on your bedding 
Um, the only thing I know that you can use on the bed, specifically because of bed bugs, you can use Crossfire. I don't believe you can use Alpine on the bed. You can use Alpine in your things like in your couches and stuff like that. You, you pull your pillows up, use it inside a couch to kill fleas, but I don't believe you can use it on your mattress at all. In fact, Alpine specifically states not to use it on a mattress when dealing with things like bed bugs, so I don't believe it's labeled to be used on your mattress at all, even for fleas. But you can vacuum your mattress, you can steam clean your mattress, and that will kill the fleas that live on your mattress. It's a lot easier to get rid of fleas on a bed than it is bed bugs. So you can usually just vacuum it, uh, take all your sheets and everything off, wash them, launder them, and then vacuum and steam clean your mattress, and that should kill any fleas on your mattress. And it's a safer thing for you to do anyway, because you don't really want to use a lot of the pesticides labeled for fleas on your actual mattress. Um, so... Cheryl Salazar says the pets could go get sick too. Gosh. Okay, so she's talking to Jon Snow. Uh, how common are bed bugs? Bed bugs are extremely common. I um, To give you an idea, I'm just a one-man show. Uh, me and my son, we do all the bed bug work ourselves. Um, we He works with me. And about 22 to 23 years ago, I did my very first bed bug job in Roanoke, Virginia. And I didn't do another bed bug job for three years. And now I do them. Um, I did one today. I did probably over the last two weeks, I've done maybe five or six bed bug jobs. So it's a quite a bit more frequent now. They're pretty common. Um, they're so common that people that have never even had bed bugs are scared they're going to get bed bugs. They've, uh, it's, it's probably as common. You know, people will always tell you, you'll, when I was growing up, and, I and the reason this is fresh in my head because my son just got his learner's permit a couple weeks ago. And one of the questions, one of the, one of the things they tell you when you get your driver's test is they say that you will probably know someone who has either been in a car wreck or been connected to someone in a car wreck uh, by the time you get your driver's license at 16 years old. That car wrecks are extremely common. And I believe bed bugs are just as common. And so that you will probably know somebody, you, you probably don't realize you know somebody because nobody shares this kind of information, but more than likely you actually know someone or directly connected to someone that is either fighting bed bugs right now or has had bed bugs in the past, that that is how common they are. They are extremely common, as common or if not more so than uh, cockroaches. They're very, very common. Uh, Dora Bella says, I'm on oxygen and have to sleep in a leather recliner. Can you tell if it's safe to put put it on the chair? Okay, so the way that I treat chairs where people sleep in their chair, uh, leather recliners are very difficult because of the way they're sewn together and because leather is not as, uh, it's not as, I mean, for any pesticide, it's, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't absorb the chemical as well as like an upholstered piece of furniture. So um, I still treat leather furniture and the way I treat leather furniture is you have to, so as it, it, where it cushions together and the seams are sewn, you want to treat in those seams around the edges. You want to turn the chair upside down and treat inside the boxes of the chair. So if you've got any kind of uh, matting or anything on the bottom of the chair, you want to take that off and you would treat up inside the chair. It's completely safe to do that. Um, Crossfire label actually says that it's, it's a non-staining formula, so it should not stain your chair. So if you're having problems or you think it might stain your chair, then you want to make sure that you go around, test the spot that isn't visible first and just see how it affects your chair and if, it, uh, you know, if it'll stain or not. That's actually what the label uh, uh, tells you to do, is it says to just apply it to an area that, it, um, that, it, you know, that you're worried that it might stain, a place that's hidden, out of sight, and if it stains it, then you might want to think carefully about treating your chair with it. So that's what I would recommend. But it is absolutely okay to use on recliners, lazy boys recliners, um, you know, sofa beds, sofas. You know, it's, it's safe to use in furniture like that. Um, so, oh, yeah, wh white water. Hey, how are you? <laughs> water white, water white tuber, a white water tuber. <laughs> how, how are you doing tonight? Uh, she it says, uh, as usual, thanks for the show. But, um, Chaos Omen says, can you treat a bagless vacuum canister with Crossfire? There's nothing on the label that says that you cannot treat a, uh, a, a vacuum cleaner with Crossfire. Um, there's nothing <coughs> that implies that you cannot do it. 
The problem with treating a vacuum with any kind of pesticide is that you would want the pesticide to dry before using the vacuum because anytime you put a liquid inside a vacuum, you run the risk of it becoming an aerosol into the air and actually being something that you can breathe in and you don't want to do that. So that's one of the reasons why I went over these labels earlier. So when it talks about uh, do not apply as a space spray, basically what that's saying is do not put it into the air where you would have the risk of breathing it in because you do not want to breathe in crossfire. In fact, I don't even think they've even studied what would happen if you did breathe it in because it's not used in that manner. So don't, don't apply it as a space spray. And a vacuum cleaner could possibly stir it up into the air where you would breathe it if it were still wet when you used your vacuum. So if you retreat the canister of your vacuum or like a, a shop vac or something like that, you do not want to use the vacuum until the chemical is dry. I actually had somebody that commented on one of my videos. He's an actual um, exterminator. And let me see if I can bring that comment up because I have a video um, that I have done, which I'm going through right now to try to find it. Uh, where he, so here's the video. Let's go here and read these comments. So someone just commented on my video three days ago. I have a video, so I, I read all my comments. So anyone that comments on one of my videos, I read every single comment. I, I love to read your comments. Please comment on my video. It gives me something to do during the day. I'm constantly checking my phone and checking my computer for people that have left me comments so I can answer your comments because I really am just here to help you. I really enjoy this. I mean, I, this is more like a, a hobby for me coming on YouTube and talking with everybody, but absolutely comment on any video that you have a question on. And, it, and like I said, the whole entire first 10, 15 minutes of this video was dedicated to a question, to a comment on one of my videos. So this guy actually said uh, that he allows for a chemical when he is doing a uh, treatment for either roaches or bed bugs, he actually allows some of the chemical to spray up inside his vacuum. So the vacuum actually sucks the chemical up. He said, uh, I use a vacuum to help German roach jobs, and after every job while I'm there, I let some of the chemical go into the vacuum to kill captured roaches. Never had a transfer problem, and I have way less callbacks. So he's bragging about how he allows when the vacuum, when he's using his vacuum cleaner to vacuum up roaches, that he allows chemical to actually go up into his vacuum cleaner while he's cleaning up cockroaches. And this is exactly why, what I'm trying to go over tonight is why you do not want to allow a liquid pesticide to go up into your vacuum cleaner because it's the possibility of turning it into an aerosol into the air and you would have to breathe it in and that's not healthy for the applicator and it's absolutely not healthy for anyone that's in the house. Now, if he's forcing the people to leave the house while he's doing the application and he's not doing the application while anybody's there, then he's probably not harming anyone but himself. But it absolutely is a, uh, a, harm, a harm to the applicator to do something like that. And so you should not do something like that. You should use a pesticide in the home. Uh, you should use it in the cracks and crevices where it tells you to use it and really not to use it in a vacuum at all unless it's been completely dried. So if you were to do something like that, it's completely at your own risk. And I don't do it. I don't do it because of the risk of it becoming aerosoled into the air. Um, so I hope I've gone over that. Harold Wilson says four months, no more bed bugs. So woohoo! <laughs> Good job, Harold. Um, I'm actually working on a video now. I've got I went through all of my videos and I searched through them and found 13 comments from the filters that I was able to apply on people that have had successes with Crossfire. Because I get a lot of comments on my videos talking about how they can't believe that I would give such horrible advice to people and that I'm telling them the wrong thing and it's much better to just hire help out and hire uh, heat treatments and do things like that. And that's all fine and good, but I've got proven results from people that aren't professionals being able to get rid of their bed bugs using Crossfire. And so I'm going to make a video that actually, um, I don't get paid. MGK doesn't pay me anything to, to brag about their pesticide. You know, I just use it and I have really good results with it. And that's the only reason why I talk about it on my show. And I, and I talk about why Crossfire is so good is because I've used it. I've used it a lot. And I, don't really use anything else. You know, if there were other pesticides that I used for bed bugs too, or other treatment application methods, I would absolutely go over those and I would talk about those and the success rate I have with them. 
But because Crossfire works so well, I don't really need to talk about anything else. It's the, you know, it just it just works. It just works. And yes, I'm beating a dead horse, but it absolutely does work. Um, so yes, yeah, Cheryl Salazar says, okay, thank you. I don't know what the chemical will be using for pest control. We'll be using for my bomb. I'm scared if you say it's harmful. Okay, so it should not be harmful for you if you leave. I would leave personally. Um, if I were you, I would just be gone while they were doing it, no matter what they were using. And that way you know that it, even if it is a harmful chemical to you, that it will be dry when you, re when you return and it won't be harmful to you. Because most pesticides actually say on the label, as long as you return when the chemical is dry, it won't be harmful to you at all anymore. Um, John Snow says, I mixed the crossfire per instruction, shook the container a bit to mix it. It seemed a little milky when spraying. Should it smell if you use too much or just not mixed well? Yeah, it will smell if you don't mix it well. John. Um, and it won't mix. Uh, yeah, you need to mix it really well. You mix it half full, you pour it in, you mix it. You, I really do need to do a video showing how to mix pesticides. But um, Dora Bella said, will it hurt my breathing? Um, no, it won't. It won't hurt your breathing. Uh, don't, don't sit in it while it's still wet. Let it dry and then it won't hurt you. Uh, Brittany says, I went six months without seeing one. Then boom, fat one just meandering across the bed in broad daylight no fecal spots no casings can't find any harborage i retreated and will retreat again um cheryl salazar says are bed bugs resistant to chemicals like roaches are yes actually they are so there is a chemical that bugs produce in their body um both profound prevalently in both bed bugs and cockroaches where if they're exposed to the same pesticides over an extended period of time they'll actually become immune to those chemicals and those chemicals will no longer work. One of the reasons that I use Crossfire is because Crossfire has pibronyl butoxide in it and pibronyl butoxide is a special chemical that um, it's like a catalyst and so it eliminates that chemical in the bug's body where they are producing that, um, that, resistance, pesticide, that resistance chemical in their body. It actually eliminates that so it causes other chemicals to work. So before Crossfire was around, one of the things we would use is we would, we would add pribromyl butoxide to our tanks. So that would force the chemical to be effective on things like bed bugs and cockroaches. So uh, now that you have a chemical already with it mixed like Crossfire, then Crossfire is actually extremely effective. And I don't believe the bed bugs will ever develop immunity to Crossfire at all because of what is actually in the active ingredient list of the pesticide. So. It does matter what you use. I mean, a lot of people will tell me on my videos, they'll say, well, you know, this guy, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I've used chemicals for years and can't get rid of bed bugs. No two chemicals are the same. Every chemical should be treated differently and every label is different. So not every pesticide is the same. Saying that every single chemical is the same because I'm spraying for bed bugs and I can't get rid of them with what I've sprayed. It's like saying that uh, bleach is the same as maple syrup. As like, oh, well, you know, they're the same thing because they're both a liquid. But no, they're not. They're absolutely two completely different things. And so no two pesticides are identical. They all have to be treated differently. Every single label has to be read differently. Pesticides need to be mixed differently. No two things are the same. So uh, just because one person can't get rid of their bed bugs with one chemical doesn't mean you can't get rid of your bed bugs using something like Crossfire. So don't, don't get your hopes down. Don't let things get you down because other people are having a real hard time getting rid of their bugs. A lot of the stuff on YouTube and Google, if you read around, they'll say you'll just never can get rid of them. You'll have them forever. And this is the same with cockroaches. People always say, you know, people with roaches always have roaches and they never get rid of their roaches. That's absolutely not true. A lot of the people who have roaches and can't get rid of their roaches, they're really not trying anything different. They're using, just using the same exact tool over and over and over. And it's like trying to put a, a screwdriver in with a hammer. You know, you can't put a screw in with a hammer. You put you, you might be able to put a screw in with a hammer, but the screw's going to fall out. You know, you're much better to use a screwdriver and use the proper tool to do the right job. Um, so hopefully that, I use a lot of analogies when I talk. So, <laughs> um, so Brittany says, did you think, did someone open a box? Was it in neighborhood kid? Oh, I'm not sure. She must be talking to somebody else. I'm not sure uh, what that is. Gary Carr, happy Thanksgiving. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, Gary. Uh, so far, so good. Crossfire did work for me. Haven't seen any bugs. I didn't do much sweeping. 
just once a week, hopefully never to see another one. So Gary is actually somebody I've been following on my channel. He's actually, I think he's even a member of my Discord, which by the way, if you're ever interested in chatting with me all the time, uh, Discord is the chat system that I do use. I have a Discord channel. It's linked below in the description. And so if you ever think of joining me there, you're welcome to you know, ask me any questions. I try to get to it. And I've actually got a pretty good community in Discord. Uh, a couple of guys in there. I think Eggbeard. I've got one guy named Captain Edbe Eggbeard that actually does understand a lot about bed bugs and how to get rid of them and answers questions a lot when I'm not available. But um, just so you know that, that that is a way that you can get questions to me more, more frequently. If you just uh, go down and scroll down to the uh, description, you can get the links there. I also have links to both Tempered and Crossfire there too. Because I was going over Tempered and Crossfire, I wanted to give links to those chemicals because I know that people in Canada are having problems with bed bugs and they are having problems getting a hold of some of the more quality chemicals that we have here in the U.S. that you cannot actually get in Canada. And so that's why I wanted to include Tempered there for people that are having problems in Canada. Um, so anyway, Gary, uh, Gary has been treating his house for the past month for bed bugs and he says he's had a really good good results in getting rid of them using Crossfire. So that's great, Gary. Rodney says, did you hear a company got indoor use on their label with the same active as Termidor? Actually, yes. I did hear that. That's fantastic news, actually, because I don't think Fipronil will hurt anything using it in indoors. It's actually a very safe pesticide to use around people and pets. And I think that that's a really good thing. I think it's a long time coming that we've needed a Fipronil on the label for a really long time. But I actually did hear that that was on the label. I'm kind of excited about using it on different things like ants. I feel like it's a very safe pesticide to use inside the home. And so I think that's a really good thing that's, that's come down the pipe. Harold Wilson says, hey Jason, I meant to ask you. I have a fan setting on my bed that vibrates. Do you put pennies in it? Or dimes? Is that how you get it to run? <laughs> Shakes the whole bed a little. Will this deter bed bugs? No, it won't. It won't deter bed bugs. They might live down around your baseboards, but they, they'll still live in the apartment or house or whatever. Uh, so I finally got to the last one. Cheryl Salazar says, Even though you are pest control, do you ever have bugs in your own home? Do we ever have bugs in our own home? Yes, you had crickets this last week. Crickets in this but last they're week? they're all dead. Yeah, they're all dead. Yeah. yeah they yeah, got so in, but they're dead. <laughs> we get bugs. We get bugs. Honestly, there's a saying, the cobbler's children have no shoes. Um, I, I, I don't like to think that I'm that bad, but I don't, I don't treat my house near as often as I do my customers. I, uh, the last, one of the last things I want to do when I get home is pull the spray tank out and go around and treat the house. Um, it's just something I just don't want to do. I would rather wait, but, um, we do get centipedes. We get centipedes. That's one of the problems this house gets. We get mice. I actually just had to bait for mice yesterday. Uh, so we do get mice this time of year. Um, there, one of the things I always bring home with me, it seems every single year are fleas. It's one of the reasons I don't like to have pets in the house is because, uh, when I do flea work in the summer, it's very hard not to bring fleas home on my clothing. They, they will get onto, you know, even if you have an indoor pet, even if you treat your indoor pets with, you know, uh, flea and tick treatments, you still run the risk of getting fleas in your house. And so uh, that's one of the number one things that I have brought home for the past probably 10 years. I've always brought home fleas. That's a real common thing. But I've never brought bed bugs home yet. I mean, I've got some. I've got some bed bugs right here in this little baggie. I don't know if you can see him in there. But I've, I've got those there mainly for these streams I do for you guys so I can show you what they look like. But I, um, I bought some test tubes. And they're supposed to be coming in the mail probably in the next couple days, but they've actually got screens on them, and I was going to do, and uh, I'm going to feed them, which, you know, there's only one thing bed bugs eat, is they eat people. So I was going to show you how they affect you, because a lot of people are so scared of them, and I thought, that, you know, to try to curb fear, I'd actually show you how they feed and the reaction that you get from a bite. So look forward to that. I'll do that live. I'm not going to do that in a video. I might do it in a video. I might do it in a live stream, but I was thinking about doing it in a live stream and letting you show what they look like when they eat. But I'm crazy like that, you know. I'm everybody here who's been a member, and, and not, not only that, I'll, 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 uh, I ought to drop a little, you know, subscribe to my channel, scroll down, hit the little red button underneath the window of the video and subscribe to me. I do crazy stuff like feed bed bugs on camera. 
And so, um, you know, if you get to thinking this crazy person, I'd like to see more of this crazy person, don't, don't forget to subscribe to the channel tonight while you're watching. Uh, it's a good time to do it right now while you're watching, but, uh, and you're thinking about it. So Chaos Omen says, so why is there such a common thing of people throwing out all their furniture and stuff in an attempt to get rid of bed bugs? So the problem is, is that bed bugs come in furniture. A lot of times they'll come in used furniture. People that throw away their furniture, other people come back, pick it up and take it home and it'll be full of bed bugs. Um, they think that they have to throw away their furniture. They believe that the bed bugs are only living in the furniture, but it's actually not true. Bed bugs live behind baseboards. They'll live around crown molding curtain rods. They live behind your uh, outlet covers. They live, uh, they live everywhere in your house. They don't just live in your bed. They don't just live in your couch. They don't live in just your bedroom furniture or your chest of drawers, your, your dressers. They can actually live everywhere. And the, the, mo the easiest way, so the reason that I use Crossfire, and one of, one of the main reasons I do, I do use it is because it is a non-repellent pesticide and bed bugs do not see it. They do not know it's there. So you can treat your mattresses and you can treat your box spring and there are the bed bugs trying to attack me. A little bag fell on me. Um, the, if the bed bugs don't know the chemical is, is effective and they don't know that it's active, then they'll crawl through it and they will die. And that's really important that you use something that they don't see as a pesticide. They don't, they don't know it's there. So they continue to come out, crawl out through the chemical and they die. And if they're in your bed or they're in your couch or they're in your love seat or they're in your you know, chest of drawers or your nightstand beside the bed, if the bed bugs are living there, they have to come out and feed eventually. And when they do, they crawl over the treated surface and they die because they don't know it's treated. So they're going to die. Basically, you're using yourself as a bait to draw the bugs out into the room because that what bed bugs are attracted to bed bugs are attracted to the co2 you give off and the your body heat signature of 98.6 degrees that's what they're attracted to they know where you are they see you they come to you they feed on you and then they leave so it's important to um, treat with a chemical that's non-repellent like Crossfire so they don't see that it's even there. They don't know it's there. They're, gonna, they're not going to give up a free meal when it's laying right in the bed. And they come out and they bite you. So you don't have to throw away your furniture. Eventually, all the bugs emerge. All the bugs crawl through it. All the bugs die. Which is why I wanted to go over that Crossfire is actually a 30-day residual pesticide. It's, it's very active for 30 days. It works for the whole month and it kills bugs the entire month it's applied so that you don't, and, but, but with Temperid, which is why I wanted to compare the two labels side by side, Temperid is a week to 10 day residual. So you're having to reapply it every 10 days. It's not working as well as Crossfire. It doesn't last as long as Crossfire. You're having to constantly put more and more out in order to kill your bed bugs. And this goes upon the question that was asked earlier about uh, resistances. The more often you have to apply a pesticide, the faster an insect is going to develop immunity to the pesticide because it's a weaker chemical. The, the chemical is not killing the bugs as effectively for as long a period of time. So they're exposed to it and they're not dying quick enough. And so they're transmitting, they're, they're transferring the uh, immunity onto the next of kin. And so that's when you run uh, the, the issue of chemical resistant cockroaches and chemical resistant bed bugs when you're using a weaker pesticide. Um, temperate is one of those pesticides where the bugs have started to develop immunity to it because of the weaky, the weaker um, concentration. It's just not strong enough. It doesn't last long enough. Uh, so Dora Bella says, I live in an apartment and 71 and disabled. What do I, what do I do? I can't live for, leave for the two hours. Um, well, I mean, in instances where you can't leave, I mean, you'd have to talk to your pest control technician if you had somebody come in to apply. If you're going to do it yourself, you know, no one can make you leave your apartment. Um, you know, you, you, I mean, if you have like a porch or something you can sit on, you can always do that. If you could sit out in your car, you could you go out and just idle the car and sit in the car for a couple hours. You could, you know, drive around a little bit. I don't know if you have that ability or not, or maybe call an Uber and ride around. Um, you know, if you if you can do that, it's it's hard, but you really should leave while it's drying. You really don't want to. The problem is, all right. So if you're treating treating your couch, 
treat your couch cushions, uh, uh, treat your bed, treat your mattress, um, treat all the, you know, if you, if you work from home and you've got like a desk chair there that you may be sitting in for seven to eight hours a day, treat your desk chair, you know, you're not gonna have anywhere to sit. And if you're anything like me, and you're walking through the house after you've treated your sofa, and then you sit on your sofa with your, with your clothing on, and then you soak the chemical up into your pants or your shirt, and then you walk away from the couch, even if it doesn't hurt you, even if the chemical doesn't hurt you, the point is you've just taken the chemical off the couch, soaked it into your clothing, and then walked away. So if you were to treat your own apartment and you were not to leave your apartment, you need to make sure that you don't come into contact with the pesticide while it's drying. That's the reason you try to tell people, hey, be out of the house. Children will do stuff just because you tell them not to do it. You know, I mean, my son is, I look at my son and say, don't you drop that fork on the floor, and he'll just go and drop it just because he's a kid, and that's how kids are. You tell a kid not to jump on the couch, and the first thing they're going to do is go run on a chemical-treated a chemical treated couch. And so it's very important to get children and pets out of the house, it's, and, and even yourself, if you're anything like me, you accidentally go across the room and sit on a treated couch, you know, you're going to pull the chemical off the sofa, and you're going to pull the chemical off of your bed, and you're going to accidentally do it before the chemicals dry. And so it is better to leave if you can. You really should. And that's why the label does that. That's why the label says that, because they don't want you to be exposed to a chemical when you really don't need to be. There's no reason to be exposed to a chemical. So... So if there are any other questions, I've got about 15 more minutes. I try to stick to an hour. I'm actually considering doing a, um, a call-in, uh, adding that feature to the show if you would want to call in and be more anonymous with your questions. Right now I have 28 viewers, something like that. It says, it says 28 in the chat. That's what it says on my chat room. I'm not sure if that's actually because sometimes that's not right. But um, I know there's like a lot of people here. Like I said, be sure to like the, the video or subscribe to the channel. It does help me a whole lot. Um, I'm at almost at 12,000 viewers now. Hey, Kat. But um, so if you, you, know, if you really uh, enjoy my content, then be sure to subscribe because it does help the channel a lot. And I was actually thinking of doing a a call-in show where people could call in and ask their questions live and I could answer it so it's a little more anonymous so if you're just sitting here watching and you're too shy to ask, answer ask a question because you're um, you might not want people to know that you have a bed bug problem then I was thinking about adding that in so you could actually call and ask me questions right on the air um, if you wanted to or on the air is this considered on the air I guess it is it's live broadcasting so <laughs> if that's something that you guys would be interested in let me know in the comments or you know, right now in the chat if it's something that you'd be interested in because I do save all of my live streams. So these do get saved later. You will be able to access this show later if it's something that you may have uh, heard me say and you missed it, you want to go back and watch it. Uh, all of the VODs are uploaded via YouTube uh, later in the day. Usually it takes about three to six hours for YouTube to get everything up because it is about an hour long. It's about how long these live streams go for. And so um, if it's something that you want to go back through and maybe watch it, a question that you might have missed and you want to catch the answer again or even write down some of the stuff I said, you're absolutely able to do that. Uh, all the links are provided in the description below. I have links to my website. I have links to my Amazon page, which let me go over that. So I have an Amazon page that I use. Let's uh, share my screen real quick. Uh, there's my, let me go ahead and minimize those. So this is my Amazon page. That's linked down below as well. And it's got all the stuff that I recommend, the chemicals and stuff, spider control, carpenter bees, bird mites, uh, stink bugs, springtails, uh, cockroaches, bed bug, uh, bed bug control for Canada and New York. It doesn't say it, but if you scroll over it, it says New York. Uh, mouse and rat control products. Uh, termites, stuff I use for termites, bed bug supplies, uh, flea, and control, pro, flea control products, and ant control products. So um, these are all of the links that I've got um, that you can actually get the chemicals that I recommend. And it's on Amazon, so you can get that Amazon Prime next day delivery and stuff like that. That's also in the link below. So if it's a, something that interests you and you want to be able to get the same pesticides I use, I just provide that as a, as a resource for you. Um, Chaos Omens asks, can bedbugs survive in outdoor storage sheds? Yes, they can. 
Uh, they can survive for up to 18 hours without a blood meal. They can absolutely survive in a storage shed. They can survive in uh, uh, those outside storage units. You know, if you pay for a storage off site, they can absolutely live in a storage unit. So, for example, if someone were to uh, rent storage and they were moving, they rented storage for maybe two or three weeks, had bed bugs on their bed, put it over in the storage, left the mattress there, came back in three or four weeks, moved the mattress into their house. Um, the bed bugs are left behind. If you go and use that storage unit behind them, you can pick up bed bugs for up to 18 months later. So they can actually survive for up to 18 months uh, without a blood meal. So they absolutely can live in storage sheds, outside storage, storage units, all those different places they can live in. Tammy Lynn asked, do they live in carpets? So if you're asking about bed bugs, they don't typically live in the carpets. They don't like heavily trans uh, transportation areas. So for example, in an area where you would walk through the room uh, to, to maybe to get into bed or to walk to your couch or sofa, they're not actually going to live in the, in the carpets themselves. They're not like fleas. So fleas live in the carpet. They actually drop and live in the carpet where you walk. They like heavily trafficked areas because that's where they're going to get their blood meal. Bed bugs are not like that. So bed bugs typically feed between 2 and 4 o'clock in the morning. They don't feed all day long like fleas do. So they want to live in a place where they're safer. So they typically will live in and around the baseboards. Uh, they will live in the carpet, but only next to the wall where the baseboard meets the carpet where it's actually nailed into the tack strip. That's where the bed bugs will live. Um, Dora Bella said, can they go into your hair? Uh, lice can. So I went over this. I had a video that I did where a guy swore up and down he had bed bugs living in his hair. And that's absolutely not the case. I don't believe that's the case at all. Um, every inspector that had come into his house had said that he did not have bed bugs. And I believe he probably had lice. Um, but bed bugs will not live in your hair. They actually can't live on you at all as a person. They can't live on pets. They can't live on animals. They live around animals and people, but they don't live on people. Even in the case of bat bugs, which are very closely related to bed bugs, and they typically live in attic spaces and caves where bats live, um, they, have, they live around the bat. They don't actually live on the bat. And so they're not like fleas or uh, lice in that they can't actually survive on your body. They, uh, they don't have the ability to hang on. They can't, they, they fall off if you get up and move around. So no, bed bugs will not live in your hair. Cat T says, will bed bugs die in cold temperatures? They will die in cold temperatures, but you're talking like negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it has to get very cold to kill bed bugs, and it has to maintain that temperature for four to eight hours to kill the bed bugs. They don't actually die from cold temperatures like what we exhibit, like what we experience in the, in the United States. Now, you go further up towards the Arctic Circle where it gets like 60 below zero. Um, those areas are extremely frigid and if the bed bugs were outside, they absolutely would die. Um, Cheryl Salazar says, does boric acid help keep rats out of my apartment? No, boric acid will not keep rats out of your apartment. Uh, Josh Halloway says, I've been using Temperate and Exciter for a few years without any issues this, thus far. I would like to try out Crossfire, but I've heard there's a bit of a mixing issue with it. I've never had a problem mixing Crossfire. Um, the thing is, is that if, if you've been using pesticide for a long time and you understand how to mix chemical, then if you mix it half full and you pour your Crossfire in and you mix it and you pour the rest of the water in, and you mix it really good and agitate it really well, you're going to have total suspension. You're not going to have a problem with it mixing at all. I've never had crossfire clog. I have had people complain, like the very one of the very few, first people that chatted in this chat room tonight was saying that they didn't think they mixed it quite right because it's kind of goopy. But if you mix it, you just have to really shake it really well. The problem is it's 13 ounces to a gallon. It's a lot of concentrate to the gallon. And so it does, it is one of those things where you just have to really, really agitate it. And while you're applying it, you take the B&G, and if you've ever used a wettable powder, then you don't, you understand, but you have to kind of shake it every now and then, and shake it every now and then, and you do this like every two or three minutes, you have to constantly agitate and mix it. But I've never had a problem with it clogging my tank ever. Um, but I would absolutely, if you're thinking of using it and you're doing a lot of bed bug work, 
absolutely use Crossfire. It's fantastic. It's amazing. I use it all the time. I just did a bed bug job today with it. I, uh, I only use it, and that's why I recommend it on my channel. Uh, I know I have a lot of people that contact me. I actually had an exterminator contact me via Facebook a few months ago, and he got all upset and mad at me and told me that I was giving away trade secrets on the internet. And I'm like, well, no, I'm just telling people how to what I'm supposed to tell people anyway, because the law in Virginia, I have to tell people what I use in their house. So, um, what's to stop them from making a YouTube channel and saying this is my exterminator today and tell everybody what I use? Nothing, nothing stops them from doing that. So, might as well tell people what I use. Um, hi, Jason. I've tried Transport Micron and Gentrol with some success for bed bugs. Do you think about Gentrol and Transport? Well, Gentrol, you're not supposed to use Gentrol for bed bugs. The, uh, the science around Gentrol killing bed bugs, as, so, so for those of you guys that don't know what Gentrol is, Gentrol is an IGR, which is an insect growth regulator, which is supposed to stop bugs from breeding, uh, and that it, it stops the life cycle. So basically, you have a life cycle with insects, where they have, you know, typically they have the egg, the, the, the baby, and then the adult, and then the egg again. And so it cycles like that. And so at some point in that life cycle, and this is the most, I'm trying to be the most easy to understand. There are lots of different life cycles in bugs, so don't get me wrong. But generally, that's the idea. And if you can somehow break any one of those pieces of the life cycle, you stop the bug from reproducing. That's what you have to do. Gentrol works on cockroaches, but it has been proven in scientific study that you have to mix Gentrol 10 times the recommended label to even get it to kill roaches. Now, if you're killing bed bugs with your solution, more than likely it's the transport micron that's killing the bed bugs, not the Gentrol. They've proven that you have to mix it 10 times the recommended label dose. And if you're doing that, that's actually against label. You're not supposed to do that. Because um, if anybody anybody here that knows me knows that I preach label is the law, you always, re you always apply based on the label. And Gentrol is really not for bed bugs. It doesn't work. It's been proven time and time and time again that it does not work. But the reason people use it is because they get such good control on cockroaches and they just assume that it works so good on cockroaches, which it does work really well on cockroaches, um, that it's going to work on uh, bed bugs in the same way. And it absolutely does not. Also, I want to mention, two nights ago, I had a video went live at 9.30, and I was supposed to be there because it was a live premiere, and I fell asleep, and I missed my live premiere, and I got up, it was 10.30, and I looked at my wife, and I said, I was supposed to be on talking to people at 9.30 tonight, so I just want to say I am sorry. I went over uh, hotels and motels. I really wanted to be there to talk to you guys about the uh, spread of bed bugs and hotels and motels because it's something that's going to happen because we're coming up in the holiday season and people are going to be visiting each other and staying in hotels and motels. And so if you haven't seen that video, go back to the video I put up two days ago and rewatch it. It's a really good video. It's about, um, like I said, it's about hotels and motels and the fear of bringing bed bugs in when you visit those types of places and how to avoid bringing bed bugs home from a hotel or a motel. So I'm really sorry I didn't make it to the live stream, but I try to make it to all my premieres so that I can chat with you guys. It's the first one I've ever missed, but I've been, I've been exhausted. In fact, I took a nap when I got home today, and I woke up about 15 minutes before I got live tonight because I've been exhausted. I've been working like crazy this winter or fall. It's not really winter yet, but the fall has been really busy for me this year. Um, so Dorabella says, how did the bed bugs originate? So there's a lot of different... Um, theories on bed bugs. The the thing is, is that it just depends on what you believe. You know, some people believe in evolution. Some people don't believe in evolution. Uh, I'm not I'm not here to talk. You know, theoretical or, or religious beliefs. But there's the thing is, is that that there are these things called bat bugs, and bat bugs are are parasites to bats. So they look identical to bed bugs. There's no difference between a bat bug and a bed bug, except the way the hair grows on their body and the way their eyes look. And in fact, if I had a picture uh, microscopically, I could show you the difference. But the point is, is they're so identical. And not only bed bugs, but also uh, chimney swift bugs, which travel on chimney swifts and other types of birds they travel with. And so um, there is belief that they, they evolved from these other types of bed bug type species. Or um, there's just something that attracts them to humans more than other animals. 
And so that's why we have the human bed bug. That's the belief. There's just, you know, everybody tries to guess as to why one bug prefers humans over other animals. I mean, mosquitoes have been around for a long time. Why do they prefer animal uh, people over animals? You know, there's lots of different, you know, thoughts and guesses, but I don't really believe anybody knows for sure. Molly, hey Molly. Hi, late last night I saw where ants were coming in through the window still, sill. For the first time I sprayed the bottom. Do I need to spray the entire window? No, so would you just treat around the cracks and crevices of your window inside and out, uh, and that's usually all you need to do to treat, and the bed bugs will die. I mean, the, the ants will die. So if you've got problems with ants and you're using, I believe you're using alpine, that's all you need to do. The ants are not going to see alpine as a chemical either. It's a, it's a non-residual, I mean, a, a non-resist, non-repellent. Had to think about it for a minute there. Yeah, so so they don't, they aren't repelled by it at all, so they'll continue to crawl through it. Uh, Peyton says, oh, wow, didn't realize that. What about other IGRs? There are no IGRs for bed bugs. There, there are none right now. There are none. So the problem with IGRs with bed bugs is they just haven't been able to develop one that works effectively on them yet. And so, um, but like I said, I've been using Crossfire. And I don't, there's no need for one. Um, and I call it the one and done chemical. So in the last year, since I've been using Crossfire, I could probably count on one hand how many times I've had to go back after one treatment. That's that's one of the, the reasons a lot of people, you know, jump on me over my, my stance on heat treatments, uh, which I'm on Reddit. Somebody posted to me in my uh, group on Facebook. They uh, Somebody had gone in 10, 10 to 12, 12 hours ago and posted my number one video on Reddit and said, this guy doesn't do heat treatments for bed bugs. Why? Is what he says true? And so, <laughs> so I'm on Reddit. The people are posting my video there now. But um, it, the, the IGR, so, so Crossfire, I've been using Crossfire for almost four years. And I mean, less than 10, less than, definitely less than 20 of the bed bug jobs I've done, I've had to go and do a second treatment. Um, I've, I've gotten, so, I've had such good success. I was doing three month treatments. So I was doing 90 day treatment plans on bed bugs. And I've just started doing single treatments now because. I, I was going back the second treatment. I never found bed bugs on the third treatment. And, and I was going back even on the second treatment and not finding bed bugs on almost every single job I would go. I would never find a live bug. I would only find dead ones. So I just stopped doing them. I would just do just the one time. And I just tell them, no, I'll just come out once. And if you need me, you know, in a month or two, just call me and let me know. And, and But I never get callbacks. I just, it's it's a really good, good chemical. And I feel like that if you can use something like Crossfire and you don't have to mix IGRs in with your chemical and you're not doing all this extra mixing and all this extra time, it's just one and done, I feel like that's that's, that's a no-brainer. I, I just use it all the time. And I recommend that every exterminator use it. You know, if you're going to... And, and not only that, you guys, if, if you guys are, are actually thinking of hiring somebody to do your bed bug work, ask them to use Crossfire. You know, it doesn't hurt to ask. So, back in 2000... Um, when we were doing the chemical transition from Durazban to Termidor, uh, one guy actually asked us to use Termidor at his house, that he had done some research and he had read where it was really effective on termites. And I hadn't actually bit the bullet yet and, and moved to Termidor, but we decided to go ahead and try it because he asked us to try it. And so we bought a new setup, we put a new setup together. He actually paid us to build the setup, So we, we uh, cause you have to use a different tank. For those that don't know, a lot of the older chemicals are um, highly repellent for termites, and a lot of the newer chemicals aren't. So you can't put a non-repellent in a repellent tank. So we had to buy a new tank and everything and put everything together. And so we went out and we treated his house for termites, and it worked so well that I've never used anything but Termidor since for termites. It is just the absolute best chemical for termites out there right now on the market. So it does not hurt to request for your exterminator to use Crossfire. And if they absolutely refuse, you can always pick up the phone and call somebody until they will, because you will find somebody that uses Crossfire. Crossfire is turning into a pretty widespread chemical. Uh, I'm a member of a lot of Facebook groups, uh, pest control groups on Facebook. And over the last four years, I've noticed a lot of people go in and they'll ask questions. They'll say, well, what are you guys doing for bed bugs now? What, what, I'm having problems killing bed bugs. What are you guys using? And more and more and more times, you'll find that people are actually using Crossfire. You'll have a few people that use Apprehend, but Apprehend is something that you have to have a license to even buy. They won't sell it to you unless you have one. So I don't talk about it on my channel because this is really a do-it-yourself channel anyway. And so I'm trying to help you guys learn how to kill bugs on your own. 
And if you can't buy it, you can't really do it on your own. So uh, yeah, Crossfire is just really good. And I feel like that if you, if you want to hire somebody and you just feel safer hiring somebody, they need to use Crossfire. Um, so let's see here. What are your thoughts on the ant killer that's like a pill? Um, I don't think baiting works for ants very well at all. It does work some, but it's not an end-all solution for ants. Bethany says, oh, she's talking to somebody else. Let's see, Kat says, I've been three weeks without bites, but I want to spray with Crossfire still. Then do it. You can do it. I do it preventatively all the time. So I just did a job this morning. Um, I have a, a house at Smith Mountain Lake that I've been servicing for uh, a really long time. And they had a problem with bed bugs where people actually brought bed bugs in about um, maybe six or seven years ago. And so I always do a preventative in their house for bed bugs every time I go now. It's just something I do. So you can actually do preventative for bed bugs if you want. Um, Cheryl Salazar, in fact, I recommend it. I recommend preventative for bed bugs, especially if you're not sure where they came from to, to ensure that you don't reinvest. Cheryl Salazar says, I live on the third floor. I, and I hope I'm saying your name right. But uh, I live on the third floor. I've never seen a rat in my place. But how would I know if they are around? Would I see them or do they hide? You could always go sit out in your car at nighttime and see if you see any. A lot of times in the middle of the night is when they run run across the road and stuff. Usually around 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. You'll, find, you'll see them. Check the dumpsters and stuff and look around there. That's how you can really find them and where they're going. That's what I do. Molly says... I wish it was a repellent. No more ant bites. Though this morning, I, it looked like they had got into it. So one thing you can do, Molly, is there are some other chemicals out there you can use around the outside. And it's like somebody was saying earlier, fipronil is actually, actually an extremely effective pesticide for ants. And so if, um, if that is something that is more along the lines of something you can do, I, I'm, I'm still looking into it. I haven't put it on my channel, on my uh, Amazon page yet. But um, I, I, you can mix it you know, put it around the outside. That's also a non-repellent too, though. But most of your ant insecticides are non-repellents. The only repellency you'll want is something you'll use around the outside to try to keep the ants away. But when you use chemical on the inside, the reason you want a non-repellent inside is because a lot of times ants will live inside your house. So if you have a problem with odorous house ants, acrobat ants, or other types of carpenter ant, they actually live in the walls. And when you use a repellent, they don't really have anywhere to go but in your house. And so you end up driving them all over the place. That's why it's really important to use a non-repellent inside and a repellent outside. Because if, you, if you're getting ants from outside the house coming in, then you want to repel them away from the house. But if you're having ants inside the house, you don't want to change their moving. You don't want to change their patterns. You don't want to change the way they walk, the way they get food, the way they gather. You want to treat those areas so that when the ants crawl through it, you know where they're all walking and they'll just die. And so that's the most effective way to get rid of ants inside a home. Um, without having to tear the walls open and tear your window frames open and try to find a nest, you know, you could spend thousands of dollars, you know, remodeling your house and still not find the ants because they're so small and they can live anywhere. Cat T says, in the Crossfire reviews, there's a bunch saying only heat works and Crossfire is a scam. They're liars. That's all it is to it. They're just liars. They're, they're liars because of videos like mine that point people to Crossfire and show people to buy Crossfire and they don't want to the people, they're losing a lot of money on these heat treatments. People aren't doing the heat treatments. They've, they've invested on these really expensive machines, and they can't sell uh, the heat treatments anymore because here I am here telling you not to do it. And I've got a lot of, a lot of uh, flack from telling people not to do heat treatments, but I don't do them because I go behind failed ones almost every day, all the time. It's something that I see every single day. I see failed heat treatments, and I just, I absolutely do not recommend a heat treatment in any case, ever. The only time I recommend heat to kill bed bugs is if you're going to wash your clothes in your dryer, and they can't get out of your dryer, and they die. So, Cheryl Salazar says, I live on the third floor. Okay, so, I already went over, I already went over that. Um, so, Dora Bella says, thank you for answering all my questions. Everyone have a blessed Thanksgiving. Be blessed always. Thank you, Dora. You have a good night. Thank you for stopping by. Um, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> uh, Swift T says, trust me, Crossfire works. 
Kat T says, I love seeing good reviews. Thanks to everyone who will help reassure others. Um, Molly says, do the ants need to bring the alpine back to their colony? No, they actually just, they, they, it rubs off from their body. They don't need to take it back at all. Uh, I admit, I only see a few ants that have died already in my bathroom. More than likely, so what I tell people is, and no, no, it normally doesn't stain paint, but you would try an area and see if it does, uh, you know, an area that's inconspicuous just to make sure, but it shouldn't stain. Um, and so what I tell people when I go into a house and I'm treating for ants, I treat with alpine. And so I always tell people, give it um, two to three weeks, maybe four weeks at most. If you still see ants after that three to four week period, then you more than likely have a nest of ants in the house. And when you have a nest of ants in the house, it takes six months to eliminate the colony. So understand, this is probably a six month process you're gonna have to go through to get rid of these ants. You will get rid of them. But the reason it takes six months is because ants can, can build six months worth of supply inside their colony to live off of. So they've got six months worth of food. The reproductives never leave the nest. So they're, they're eating the stored food that the workers are bringing back to them but the workers stop because you're killing workers. So you're, you're treating the area where the workers are traveling. The workers are dying. They're not taking anything back. and so But they can live there for six months. So you want to stay on it right on your calendar. Like if you do the first Monday of the month, retreat on the first Monday of the month for six months. And usually you eliminate your ants that way. That's how you kill them. You want to make sure you're consistent. Don't miss an appointment. Stay on target. And and you'll get rid of your ants. They're not hard to get rid of at all. It just takes time because they're so because they're so OCD about building up that stored food product inside their colony. That's why you have to treat inside and outside because if they can't get food inside, they send workers outside to get food. They can get food from outside or inside. Even in the wintertime, you'll find ants gathering. If you get a nice warm day in the winter, in the middle of the day, they'll be gathering food in the middle of the day, even if it's wintertime, just because they don't want to starve. So, um... Uh, Brittany says crossfire definitely works. I feel like a lot of places want you to pay for a heat treatment. Crossfire is only forty dollars, and you can spray it yourself. It kills them when they climb up the bed too. There you go. There you go. See, this is the stuff I get all the time. You guys need to send me messages. So I've got a Discord. Go on my Discord and give me these messages here. I need these because I'm working on a video right now to show people how Crossfire works and why Crossfire is so effective because you guys are the ones that matter the most. You are not a professional. I'm a professional. But you're able to buy Crossfire and kill bed bugs with Crossfire. So I want to know your... I, I, want, I want these. I want these comments. I want these reviews. I want these testimonials because I want to do a video showing people that it absolutely... You can kill bed bugs on your own. You don't need to pay three, four, five, six thousand dollars on a heat treatment, you can do it for as low as like what, two hundred bucks? If you figure you get, you know, at, at least at, at most two hundred bucks. You probably won't spend more than two hundred bucks. So uh let's see. Okay, I know the cold doesn't always work, but it gets at times negative 25, negative 12, will that kill bed bugs? No, no, it won't. It won't kill them. Um, Molly says so. So negative 12, negative 25 does not kill bed bugs in your vehicle. It has to be colder than that. Um, Molly says thanks for your encouragement. Uh, Chaos Omen says how effective is washing and drying things to get rid of bed bugs? It's very effective as long as it's high heat dryer you, you really mainly the dryer needs to be at least 130 plus degrees to kill bed bugs in the dryer for at least an hour um what would you recommend for things like stuffed animals throw them in the dryer you could throw them in the dryer and tumble them in the dryer uh key lab says any aerosol you think is okay like bedlam no i don't think any aerosol is okay uh bedlam doesn't really kill bed bugs anymore the bed bugs are pretty much immune to bedlam so i don't recommend it it's also an mgk product um but Crossfire is kind of like the replacement for Bedlam. I don't recommend Crossfire uh, aerosol, and I, and I don't recommend Bedlam aerosol because aerosols just aren't as effective on bugs as, other, as an actual liquid insecticide. Uh, Molly says, yes, thanks to your encouragement and guidance, the bed bugs are gone. Um, so see, that's another one. See, like I said, I, 
it's hard for me to copy and paste these. <laughs> you know, I want screenshots and stuff so I can show people that you guys have been able to kill your bed bugs. But, uh, and you know, it's, it's completely, you, you, you tell me whatever your name is. It doesn't even matter what your name is. The main thing is that people are doing this and it's working. So I'm, you know, I'm you know, uh, anonymous. You could be anonymous. No one needs to know who you are. But the main thing is I just want people to know that it absolutely is possible for just anyone to get rid of bed bugs. It's not something you need to be afraid of because so many people are afraid of bed bugs and uh, there's really not any reason to be. So uh, says, I, I used Crossfire five days ago. How long should it take before they're gone? It takes at least a month to get rid of your bed bugs. Um, the reason that is is because it takes bed bugs six to ten days to hatch from an egg. From the egg hatch, it takes six to ten days to get your first bite. And then it takes six to 10 days for them to grow again, six to 10 days to grow again. And so it takes at least 21 days before the bed bug comes out to bite you for the first time. So it's gonna take at least three weeks before your egg that was just laid today hatches and bites you. So expect to get bit up to three weeks before you start to really see a knockdown on your bed bugs. As all my tea is gone. So that's a sign I'm going to have to end my show. <laughs> um, I've been here for almost an hour and a half. You guys, this has been a very active stream tonight. Almost 30 people tonight. It's a lot of people tonight. <clears throat> but uh, I know Temperate and Crossfire are something people are really interested in. And I really wanted to go over those two chemicals tonight with you guys. I do get asked a lot of questions about Temperate. But um, I just wanted to try to explain why I don't use Temperate. But um, yes, I do a full baseboard treatment with Crossfire Key Lab. I do. I treat the baseboards. I treat behind the baseboards, the cracks and crevices. You know, that's what you do. Um, but Chaos Omen says, before I found your channel and learned about Crossfire, my bedbug paranoia was affecting my mental health and day-to-day -day life, being so anxious about the fear of getting them again. Absolutely. But there's nothing to be afraid of. The thing is, I actually did a video about this too, on the PTSD around bedbugs and if you have the knowledge and you understand how to get rid of a bug problem, whether it's bed bugs, roaches, fleas, termites, if you have the knowledge to kill them, there's absolutely no reason to be afraid. That the, the main reason people are afraid of different things is because of the ignorance around how to get rid of a problem. If you know how to get rid of them, there's no reason to be afraid. So you can absolutely kill bugs. You, it, bugs are not something to be afraid of. There are, they're, they're not hard to get rid of. They're very easy to eliminate any kind of bugs. And I could, if you have any question about any kind of bugs, ask me. I'll tell you how to kill them. I've been killing bugs for 32 years. I don't have any problem telling you how to do it. Um, now, the, Tammy Lynn asks, does Crossfire kill bed bug eggs? All right. So the label claims it does. I don't know if it does or not. The problem with labeling is a lot of times labels will get around saying that it, they kill eggs in all stages of bugs, even if they don't. And the reason that is is because the eggs are inside the mother. If you kill the mother before she lays the eggs, the eggs die with the mother. So that's, the, that's why they're able to say that all stages are eliminated with the pesticide. But in some instances, like cockroaches, if you kill the mother, the eggs can still hatch, even if she hadn't laid the eggs yet, because the eggs actually are laid inside an egg capsule that she carries on her body. And if that egg capsule is ready to, to hatch, then you can still have babies, even though the mother is dead. A lot of insects are not that way, though. If they lay individual eggs on their own, then... Uh, those eggs, if they're not laid, will die with the mother. So that's how they're able to say on the label that it kills all stages, including the eggs, is because uh, they're a it's actually a little, it's, it's borderline false advertising because it implies that if you spray an egg directly, it kills it. But in most instances, it does not do that. Now, Tempered claims it does kill eggs. But the thing is, is Crossfire will kill the egg when the baby hatches. The thing is, is the baby has to hatch, and when it crawls through the chemical, they die. So if you treat an area where there are eggs and you see the eggs, then know that in 7 to 10 days when those eggs hatch, that larva, or not larva, but that bed bug that hatches out of that egg absolutely will die. 
because um, bed bugs don't have a larva stage. That's why I corrected myself. They actually just have instars. So, Malaka says, thanks, I'm actually studying to become an exterminator in Illinois. Your channel has been a godsend. Well, great, I'm glad. If you have any need any help in passing the exam, let me know. I'll try to help you best I can. <laughs> That's the worst part of anything. If any any exterminator will tell you the worst part is passing the exam. Um, what do you think about Zevo? Ze I don't know what that is. Zevo for killing insects. Let me see. Let me look it up. Because Illinois is a little different than Virginia. Um, so Zevo... Let's see. Let's look together. Let me share my screen. This is what I'm looking at. So I'm, I'm assuming this is the chemical right here that you can buy at Target. Um, Zevo is way smarter than bugs. Oh, oh, what do you know? It's smarter than bugs? No way. All right. So let's see. What makes Zevo unique? Effective. Oh, it's effective. Okay. See, I'm very skeptical. I'm <laughs> very, very skeptical. Very skeptical. Um, oh, they've got somebody really went to a lot of work to create a. Oh, look at that. That's that's not even that's not even a real picture. Um, all right, so it's made of uh, it's made of essential oils. Ah, oh, it's crap. It's garbage. It's garbage. Not effective. Uh, essential oils don't kill bugs. They they just don't. I'll, I'll just say that right now. They don't work. They don't work. They they're it's a, it's snake oil. Um, some do, some do, but the problem with essential oils is that uh, people use them because they're natural. But you need to understand that everything that is uh, that kills bugs should be considered toxic because it kills things. The problem with uh, the essential, soil, uh, essential oil community is they sell things um, based on the all-natural. They're, they're touting this all-natural. They're, they're, they're capitalizing on the fear of pesticides, and they're, they're, they're trying to teach people to be scared of pesticides. But pesticides are tested and uh, hundreds of tests, in fact, to even um, allow a chemical to be approved by the FDA. Somebody had posted on here earlier that uh, fipronil just got an inside label. You know, fipronil has been around since 2000. That's 20 years it took them to even allow it to be used inside a home because they had to test it so many different ways to make sure it was safe to even use inside your home. They don't just approve a chemical right off the bat to allow it to be used inside your home. These are chemicals that have been through hundreds and sometimes even thousands of tests before they allow them to even be sprayed inside and around your children and your pets. And uh, there are much more harmful things that you that people do every day that are more harmful than killing bugs. Um, like there, are, I mean, we could sit here all day and argue about you know going to McDonald's, but people will go to McDonald's and buy a, a Happy Meal for their child. And, and give them all that garbage and let them eat that, but then they won't spray and kill their black widow spiders. So there are, there are things that, that we know, proven, that bugs do to humans that are extremely harmful. So you don't want bugs around. Everybody understands that. But essential oils are, uh, the reason that they're toxic is because they kill things. So anything that's considered toxic is harmful. And so you need to treat it as a toxic chemical. Even if it isn't considered a chemical, it should be treated as a chemical because it's toxic. It's killing a bug. How is it killing a bug? Why is it killing the bug? Do you really want that around your family? How many tests has it gone through? Well, the problem is, is that essential oils don't have to be tested. They can be released on any kind of a promise and people will say it works. People will say, oh, man, that stuff really works. I used it. It worked for me. And so really it's built on a testimonial, not on scientific fact. And that's the problem with using essential oils for pest control, um, is that it's not built on fact. It's built on testimonials. And testimonials can be uh, skewed with the, what they call the placebo effect because people are just wanting anything that will work, and they believe it's worked even though it hasn't. 
Um, so peppermint oil, just to give an example, peppermint essential oil can kill your cat. It can also cause SIDS in babies. Um, it's, it's a very dangerous thing to be using around your house for bugs. It's one of the number one things people do spray around their house for bugs. They mix it with uh, water and they, they apply it around their baseboards and stuff and they use it like a pesticide. It's absolutely should not be used as a pesticide in your home. So that's why I just don't, I don't agree with the, use, the widespread use of, of essential oils and pesticides. I think that they should really be studied more and researched more until uh, we know for sure that they're actually safe to use around humans. See, I'm very, I know how all the chemicals that I apply work. I know how they affect an insect's nervous system. I know how they affect mammals. I know where to apply and where not to apply. And I just feel like, I mean, I know I, I've had essential oils. Don't get me wrong. My wife actually had had a diffuser up till yesterday, um, and. We use essential oils in the house every now and then for different things. We used to make our own soap, and we would put like bergamot and different things in our soaps that we would make. And so I, I don't have a problem with essential oils on a whole. I just have a problem with them being used as a pesticide as if they're safe, when you really should understand you're still using something that is killing something else. It should be treated with respect if you're going to go that route. And that's the problem I have with essential oils and the community that, that, that pushes them. That's why I don't use them. I don't recommend them. It has nothing to do with trying to save you money or, or trying to save you from exposure to pesticides. Trust me, if I could eliminate all your bug problems and you'd never have to use a pesticide again, I would tell you exactly what to use and how to do it. But right now, that doesn't exist. So, uh, June, July says, uh, oh, I'm uh, sorry, a Chaos says, earlier this year, we had these little red bugs that looked like ticks. Would you happen to know what they Oh, yeah, the spider mites. You probably had spider mites crawling all over the place. That's what they probably were. They look like seed ticks, but they're red. And if you smush them, they make like a little red smear. The spider mites. You could treat your yard around the outside. You treat around the uh, base of your house, and so you can kill those. June, July says, your help is deeply appreciated. Thank you so much. Have a good night. And with that, I'm actually going to go ahead and call it a night because it's been an hour and a half. That's the longest live stream I've done in probably a year. But uh, I had a lot of people on tonight. I really appreciate everybody that showed up. Like I said, if you really like the show, think about subscribing to my channel. I try to get live every single Thursday night. I'm here live to answer your questions. If you have any about any kind of bugs, don't just ignore the title of the channel. Whatever you want to talk about, I'm free and open. We've talked about all kinds of stuff tonight, from essential oils to bed bugs to ants, all kinds of stuff. So if you guys have any questions uh, and you're watching this and it's pre-recorded, don't hesitate to leave me a question in the comments below, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. I read every single one of my comments. Every one of them, I read them all. So you guys have a great night. I really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you later. Thanks.